Let's do that. You was playing when we come in. Come up hither in the sun realm. Where no dragons here abide. Hallelujah. Come up hither in the sun realm. Where no dragons here abide. For the sure word.
change in us. He's bringing about that change in us. Hey, yes, He is. We're seated, seated at His feet, listening to His voice, and every time He speaks, there's a change taking place. And it's coming from the inside out. It's not something we're looking without for. But it's something from within. Hallelujah. If it's from without, then you'll have to keep going without to get it. But if it ever comes from within, Jesus taught us it shall be a well in you, springing up into everlasting life. His, his whole theory to that woman was, you drink this well, you're going to thirst again because it's a natural well. But he said, if you'll drink this water that I shall give thee, you shall never thirst again, for it shall be within you a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. Hallelujah. And to think how blessed you are and the thousands upon thousands of people tonight who don't even realize what they've got on the inside of them they can tap into. Can you say praise the Lord? And when you talk to them, are they not generally destitute and down and don't even see how they can get up again? But people, it's filled with that well of life. Don't never worry about whether they're going to get up again because they know it is an ever springing well. Yeah. Amen. And if you just praise him a little bit, it's not long till you hit that well and you feel it minister to your spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank you for being here tonight and uh, thank God for two good services Sunday in the presence of the Lord. I'm telling you what, I felt so good when I was preaching that message Sunday night about prayer and passion. I'm telling you, I had me a good time and I'm glad to be back tonight to hear what the Lord has to say. Amen. If you'd be so kind as to prepare an offering and get ready to bring to the Lord. We're going to make our decree of faith together tonight, everybody. This is my seed. God gave it to me. I now reinvest it into His great kingdom for the working of the ministry. And I expectingly await a return harvest in every area of my life. God bless you tonight. Hallelujah.
and we'll read in uh, Luke, I believe it's the 17th chapter. Yes, the 17th chapter. So, but first, let's get this scripture in Colossians, the first chapter, and uh, we'll begin in the 12th verse, and we'll read uh, through the 19th verse. 12 through 19, Colossians chapter number 1. Amen. We're going to talk about the kingdom within tonight. The kingdom within tonight. And we're reading in verse 12 of Colossians 1. And giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us, glory to God, into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible. Everybody, let's read that together one more time. Who is the image of the invisible. Praise God forever. Amen. He's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of what? Every creature. Now that verse alone tells you and I that if He's a firstborn of such, we too, we too have something invisible on the inside of us. Amen. We are like God's own seed because a seed can only reproduce after its own kind. So we are more than flesh and blood. We are more than bone and tissues. We are more than that. Oh, we have much more than that. Oh, glory to God. That's not all there is to us. That's just the visible part of us. But there is, and it brings a visibility to a frame and a makeup and a form, but with inside of that form is the invisible God tonight. Amen. And so by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Now watch it now. Both visible and, and, not are, but and. That's your makeup tonight. Both visible and invisible. Praise the Lord. Whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him, and He is before all things, and by Him all things consist, and He is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from, from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence, for it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. Amen. Glory to God. We could read on there and get lost tonight. But, uh, amen, because the Bible says He's reconciled all things in that next verse, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you who were once aliens, come on now, enemies in your where mind, by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. And in the body of his flesh through death he presented you holy and unblameable and unreprovable. <laughs> oh, glory to God. In his sight. And what's the secret to all of this becoming manifest in your life is for the verse 23 says, if you continue in the faith. Are you hearing me? grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Are you listening? Yes. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. God rewards faithfulness. Now, in the book of Luke, the 17th chapter, the book of Luke, the 17th chapter, beginning in verse uh, 20, and this is right after the healing of the ten leper, when Jesus healed them and said, Go show yourself unto the priest. And the Bible said, One of them on his way, glory to God, because they didn't get healed while they were there. No, they got healed as they went. 
Praise God. There was no visible sign in their body that they were healed of leprosy until they turned to go. And as they went, they were healed. Hello. How many know sometimes the healing is in the obedience of what God said? But they were healed, but they weren't whole. They were healed, but not whole. But one of them saw the healing and turned around to give God the glory. And when he did, he was made ever with whole. And then the Pharisees comes to Jesus in verse 20 and demands of him when the kingdom of God should come. Amen. And Jesus answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Glory to God. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Praise the name of our God. Oh, how many of you know that... that, that uh, uh, many today can't, can't comprehend that scripture. No, sir. Why? Because they're still in religion. That's what the Pharisees represent, religion. And religion said, show us something tangible or earthly or visible. Visible. That's just like when, well, glory, when uh, Philip said, uh, show us the Father. And it sufficeth us. How many know he wanted to see a visible representation of the Father? And how many know Jesus was the visible image of the invisible? But the Father is not visible to these natural eyes. He is a spirit. Therefore, to see him, you have to have spiritual eyesight. <laughs> and to see the kingdom, you've got to have spiritual eyesight. And the religion of that day is the same as the religion of this day. They believe as long as they can see it with their natural eyes and hold it with their natural hand. But when it comes to the invisible realm, and there are many titles of the invisible realm, the invisible realm can be called the supernatural, it can be called the spiritual, it can be called uh, the heavenly, amen, it can be called another realm or another dimension, amen. All those mean the same thing. Heaven is more than an altitude, folks. Heaven is an attitude. Amen. It's a knowing. It's a knowing there's something there that you cannot visibly see with your natural man. And yet we stand here in a visible atmosphere tonight. But parallel with this visible atmosphere, parallel meaning right along here beside of us, there is another world and another realm. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen to God. And what we in the American world has done is because we can't see it with the natural eye, we automatically have assumed that it must be too far off to see. Well, i got news for you. If it was standing on your nose, it'd be too far off to see. In the natural realm, you've got to have spiritual eyesight to see over into the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. But these, these religious folks demanded of Jesus, just like Philip said, show us a father. Jesus said, have I been with you so long and you know me not if you've seen me. You have seen the Father. Amen. And it's the same way with the kingdom of heaven. It, Jesus said it does not come with observation and you can't say, lo, here it is. Lo, there it is. But the kingdom of God is within you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And then a little further down, he says to us that, that the days will come when you'll desire to see just one of the days of the Son of 
of man. And he said, you shall not see it. Why? Because he was fixing to step back over into that supernatural world that he came out of. Amen. And he said, they shall say to you, see here and see there. Don't you go after them. Don't you follow them. He said, there's lightning that lightened out of one part under heaven shine it to the other. So shall also the Son of Man be in His day. Are you listening to me? But I'm telling you the same thing happened. The disciples were full of religion just like the rest of them. He had to get it out of them just like He had to get it out of us. And right up to the day of His glorification when He led them on the 50th day uh, to our, our 40th day after His resurrection when He led them to, to Bethany and raised His hand up and blessed them. You know what they said? Oh, when wilt thou again restore the kingdom of Israel. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons that are in the hand of the Father. Here's what He told them. But go and tear it and you shall receive power and glory to God that which He's talking about the kingdom. He said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is crying. In other words, you quit seeking an earthly dimension and begin to seek that right of power and Jesus said if I cast out devils by the finger of God then the kingdom has come unto you. Amen. He also said if you be an evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will the heavenly father give good things to them that ask fear not little flock. It is the father's good pleasure to give unto you his kingdom. <coughs> Hallelujah. Can you say amen tonight? Woo, let, me, let me read some more things to you. We're going to hit the word heavy tonight. Amen. Because if you want to know what's something, that word's got the answer. Amen. Now we quote this verse all the time. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.18 uh, For while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. <laughs> now let me read that to you out of the mirror. We are not keeping any score of what seems so obvious to the senses on the surface. It is fleeting and irrelevant, but it is the unseen, eternal realm within us which has our full attention. Everybody say, my full attention. Say it one more time. You're to be giving yourself diligently over to that which you don't see in the natural. Because what you do see in the natural, you don't like. Hello? The most of it, you don't like the way it appears right now. So why would we devote our ambition and our strength and, our, and our, our belief and desire into the realm of what we don't like? No, we must give our full attention over, are you hearing me? To the supernatural realm. Amen. Let me, I didn't plan on reading this, but let me read one more. You don't have to turn there. You can just jot it down for later future reference, but Colossians chapter 3 and it says hallelujah I've got to be careful that page is out of my Bible if you be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right set your affection on things above and not on things of the earth oh hallelujah how many remember me preaching to you the other night about time and the purpose of time? Well, let me tell you another time of Scripture. Paul said in Romans 8, I reckon the suffering of this present time. Come on now. He is not worthy to be compared to that glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. All right, so he says, seek those things which are above and set your affections on things which are above. Well, glory. All right, in the Living Bible, it reads like this. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Let heaven fill 
your thoughts. Praise the Lord. How many realize that this thing never touches your thought life? You ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because your thought life becomes the spiritual zone in which visions and ideas and concepts and, and, and images uh, that God wants you to behold uh, not in your conscious natural man but in the subconscious realm of your mind uh, well glory to God God wants you to begin to envision some things because even beyond that subconscious is the divine mind of God that will bring to pass anything that you can envision. Hallelujah. If you can see it, God can produce it. That's what we're trying to tell you. That's what it means for the kingdom to be within. If you can see it, you can have it. If you can perceive it, you can hold it in your hand. If you can meditate on it day and night, not all the mess as it is now, but the way you believe God has ordained it to be. Amen. Then it can be produced yes. and brought forth. Yes. Hallelujah. All right, that's another scripture says in Romans 1 17. For herein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. But then Hebrews 4, 2 says, For unto us, unto us was the gospel preached, Amen. as well as unto them. But the same word preached did not profit them, because it was not mixed with faith. And then there are how many know that I can get up here three times a week, and I do, and preach you this gospel. But if faith never is mixed with what you hear, then that sermon never lives beyond Sunday or Wednesday or ever what service it was ministered because it's not mixed with faith in them that heard it. Amen. Now, Hebrews 11 says, Now faith. See, that's kingdom now. That's now kingdom. Now faith. Now power. Now. Everything's now in God is a what? Substance yeah. of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. By faith the elders obtained a good report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that, now here it is folks, so that things which <laughs> which appear were not made, or things that are made were did not come from things which do appear. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, now let me read that to you in the Amplified. It says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, and the title deed. The title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith is not hoping you'll see something. Faith is a conviction of reality in your spirit. Well, glory to God. That what you see in that eternal spirit realm has to come into manifestation because you've been convinced beyond confusion in your life that God will do what He said He'll do. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not yet revealed to the senses. Are you hearing me? And then the living Bible says, what is faith? It is the confidence assurance that something we want is going to happen. Is going to happen. But the mirror Bible tops it all off by finishing it out and saying, faith alone explains what is not apparent to the natural eye. Let's say that again. Faith alone explains that I've got something in me that is not apparent or visible to the natural eye. Are you hearing me? And then it goes on to say how the ages were perfectly framed by the Word of God and we now understand that everything visible has its origin in the invisible. Now, folks, you can't get any plainer than that. Anything you're ever going to have or possess that is outside of your natural means or capability of getting it will have to come from the invisible. 
Hallelujah. Now I'm just going to take a chance here and say for the most part, if it come up to a million dollars tomorrow, I don't believe there's nobody in here tonight that in the natural could just reach down in their bank account and flop out a million dollars on the table. Hello. So, that's the natural. Now what do I do? Sit around and, and cry all day tomorrow because in the natural I ain't got a million dollars? No. No. I must understand that if it's not something that's within my earthly power to have or to get, then I have to know it's coming from the invisible. And then, well, glory be to God. And so there's where faith has to come in. There's where the kingdom walk comes in. I'm not moved by what I see. Not moved by what I hear. Not moved by what I feel. We'll turn it around to another incident. If you were sitting across from that doctor's desk and he told you you had three days to live, there ain't nothing in the natural you can do. They ain't, there's some things, folks, that you just can't take a herb for. There's some things that medicine just ain't going to do nothing for. And in that sense of the round, then there's no reason for you to seek out any natural means to make you better again. Therefore, you're to turn completely from the natural, hallelujah, <laughs> and set your affection on a Mashita Bahanda on things above and not on that's the kingdom life right there. When you know the supernatural is more real, than the natural. Then you're starting to figure out the kingdom. Jesus said, them demons come up here and all I do is point my finger and power flows out of me. And if I do that, then the kingdom is come. Amen. It's a manifestation of an invisible force of power that is on the inside. In verse 7, talking about Noah, it says that he prepared himself being warned of God things not seen as yet. The message Bible says, by faith Noah built a ship on dry ground. Glory to God. Amen. The vital truth is that faith is never meant to operate in the seen realm, the natural realm. In fact, it just won't. I'm just telling you tonight, it won't do it. Now, from what it went, we quoted this, I think, uh, Sunday night or Sunday morning maybe talking about James 1 where he said if any of you lack let him ask yeah. if any man asks let him ask faith jump from heaven well we, we draw from all that bless God that there's only two things two reasons why we don't receive the first reason is a lack of understanding yeah. we, don't, we don't understand how it works secondly unbelief yeah. unbelief alright all wavering is done in the mind. That's where your wavering is. Now, if you can decipher in between uh, the two and figure out that you can doubt in your head without doubting in your heart, but you must, through the Word, put out the fires of unbelief going on in your head or it will go on down to your heart. Hello. Yeah. There ain't a person in this world trying to believe God that if it don't come the day you thought it should come, it's a little something is going to say, well now God, I thought you said. But how many know right then the word must come up. Yeah. Yeah. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Yeah. Amen. So lest we sin the sin of unbelief. Because yeah. unbelief is a sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Mm -hmm. Worry is a sin. Because it's saying you don't fully trust the Lord is going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Hello. So we come to light of the Scripture, fully truth in that Scripture, that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and call God a liar. Mm -hmm. Amen. All have sinned. And this we think about sin is the nightclub and the, and the pool hall and the gambling ranch and all that. That's not what we're dealing with. We're dealing with little foxes that's trying to spoil our mind. So how many know that the minute unbelief hits our mind, if we don't blow it out of there, by the word, it will seep down into our hearts. 
Praise the Lord. Now, uh, I want to say some things here. I want to bring some more scriptures to you to the light. First of all, lack of understanding. People don't even know what it is when you say the kingdom of God. A lot of them thinks it's something coming after the millennium reign. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks thinks it is the millennial reign. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks uh, think that it's something that's going to come seven years after the rapture. Yeah. And, and that's the truth. They don't believe you can even have the kingdom mm -hmm. while on this earth. Now Jesus openly said, pray, mm -hmm. thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. But there again, if God don't show them what you used to argue with them, it won't do no good. But anyway, what I'm getting at is there's no understanding. Now we know the Bible teaches us my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Hello? All right, we know the Bible said where there is no vision, the people perish. And we know that on the counterpart of that, Daniel said the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Yes. Paul said that I may know him. Yes. Now in order to get to where he could know him, he had to forget everything the old law taught him. Yes. Everything religion taught him, he had to forget it. You remember him saying, forgetting that which is behind? Well, that's what he was forgetting. He was forgetting all of that old teaching. Amen. And so he said it himself. Did he not prophesy that when I was a child, I spake like a child, I understood as a child. But when I become a man, I put away childish things. And one day that prophecy is going to hit every house in the land and the truth is going to set in on them and all these grown folks wearing diapers, come on now, and shaking rattles in church are going to have a sudden spurt of growth in their mind. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll tell you, it's, it, it right now is the shape it's in. A lot of them are grown up in body, but their mind is still hindered. Yeah. Amen. They're still, they've still got a mind of an infant. Yes. But God deliver us from ignorance. Yeah. And then if those that can't hide behind ignorance because they've heard it, God delivers from stubbornness. Yeah. God delivers from childishness. How I many know some of the people you're dealing with in your life right now knows exactly what to do to get out of the mess mm -hmm. they're in, but they're as stubborn as a mule. Mm -hmm. And they ain't going to listen to nothing, especially coming from you or me. Yeah. And so some uh, things I just have to let the Lord attend to. Yeah. Because no matter what you say, yep. hello, yeah. they're not going to listen to you. So there'll come a time, just like with Paul, every man in his own order, when they'll grow up mentally mm -hmm. and spiritually. Yep. Hello? And you won't have to tote them no more mm -hmm. on your coattails. Right. Hello? Yeah. Glory to God. And so, you know, it's back to the old mother eagle stirring up the nest. Some folks just ain't going to have it no other way but to get a prickly nest. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so, praise the Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you're a ruler in Israel and ought to know these things. Mm -hmm. And he said, if I've told you about earthly things and <laughs> you know them not, how shall ye believe if I speak to you of heavenly things? things. So that tells us right there, it takes a whole different level of understanding yes. to know spiritual things. Yes. Then it then ain't nothing no more worse than to hear somebody that ain't even got the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. try to preach to you what the Word says. Yes. Hello. Yes. I don't want to hear nothing they've got to say. Mm -hmm. 
Because it takes the Holy Ghost to interpret the book, folks. Without Him, you can't do it. Do you know the word no is one of those peculiar words? You know how I've taught you that there are phrases that are peculiar to the book of John that are not in any other one of the gospels such as the phrase Father and the phrase abide. Well, no is one of them. And no is used 87 times in the one gospel of John. That's the truth. And this, I was going to read you some of them out of John 8. And like I say, just follow me tonight. If you don't want to turn there, you can look them up this week in your studies. But in John chapter 8, and starting in verse 14, this gives us just an example of how folks have got to come into some knowledge of stuff. Jesus answered and said, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came. And I know where I go. In other words, he said, I know where I come from. And I know where I'm going back to. And how many of you know that's one of the things you and I have got to know tonight? We've got to know where we come from. And we've got to know where we're going back to. And he said, uh, for I know whence I came, whither I go, but you cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. In other words, you'll have to get in the Spirit to know where I come from. He said, now listen to verse 15, you judge after the flesh. But he said, I judge no man. Mm -hmm. And yet he went on to say, if I did judge, my judgment is true. Mm -hmm. For I'm not alone, but I am the Father mm -hmm. <laughs> that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I'm one that bear witness of myself. Now he was speaking there about that flesh that was standing there with him. But then he said, I got something in me. The Father that sent me bear witness. Then they said unto them, Where is thy Father? Jesus said, You neither know me nor my Father. Hello. Mm -hmm. For if ye had known me, you should have known my Father also. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And these words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hand on him, hands on him for his hours not yet come. Then said Jesus unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, ye cannot come. The only way to go where he was going was to know where you come from and to have a reconciling back to. Hello. Then said Jesus, uh, or verse 22, Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? How carnal, how dumb, how carnal. He, he was talking about his crucifixion, and they said, Will he kill himself? They thought he was talking about committing suicide. Because he said, Whether I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, You're from beneath, and I'm from above. Ye are from this world. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. But the I am word, he said, I'm not from this world. Yeah. The I am. Well, have you got the I am yeah. on the inside of you tonight? Yeah. Then there's part of you that ain't of this world. Yes. Well, glory to God. This here you can visualize come from this world. But there's a kingdom on the inside of you that cometh not with observation. It is not me. It is not right. But it is righteousness, peace, and joy. And the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Well, I've preached me happy already. Amen. All right. He said in verse 24, And I said, Therefore unto you, you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not, then I am He. Amen. Then you shall die in your sins. Then they said, Who art thou? And Jesus said, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Glory to God. And another thing they did not understand and could not relate to was that the Father he was referring to was that invisible God on the inside of Him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. Mm -hmm. And 
so he said, uh, uh, they understood not that he spake of the Father. Verse 28, Jesus said, when ye have lifted up the Son of uh, a man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me. I speak these things. He that sent me is with me. I wish you'd get a hold of that. He, that, he wasn't down here in God off somewhere else. He said, He that sent me is with me. Yeah. The Father hath not left me alone. For I do always those things that please Him. Hallelujah. And as He spake these words, many believed on Him. And Jesus said to those Jews which did believe on Him, If ye continue in My Word, then are ye My disciples indeed. Now here's where we're going to stop at, and I wanted to get to this particular verse. And ye shall know the truth, yes. and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. 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 If there's anything hindering us from getting to God, it's a lack of knowing. Yeah. A lack of understanding. Are you listening? Matthew 22, Jesus said, you do, ye do err not knowing the Scriptures or the power of God. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, the desire of God is for a people, He told Daniel, that will be strong yeah. and do great exploits. Yeah. Because they know Him. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time to get to it, but in Ephesians 1, 9 through 17, all talks about knowing and coming into the power. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's reserved for them. To know. Now, in the passage that I've quoted from James 1, back to that thought that the wavering is done in the mind and the thoughts. For one to receive a manifestation, you have to hold the thought of what you desire before you and close the door on every other picture. Yeah. Yeah. Every other picture. If you want that leg straight, you must never see it crooked again. Yeah. If you want that bank account full, you've got to quit calling it empty. If you want your, if you want God to promote you on a job, then you've got to quit leaving there every day saying that boss man don't like me and I'm not being treated fair. Somewhere you're gonna have to get a vision that I am favored by God and He is gonna elevate me. He is gonna raise me up. This is true faith, laying hold of the invisible, pulling into your thought realm bringing it forth into substance. Glory to God. Faith will cause whatever you desire to materialize. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's the kingdom within you operating yeah. mm -hmm. to bring it. See, we think, that we think of the kingdom being within us as just end times to know it's everyday stuff. Mm -hmm. That's where we miss out on it. We just as bad as the rapture, folks. We're waiting on some day. I'm telling you, share right now. Yes. And you say, amen. amen. I said, it's share right now. And amen. we're still acting like we're waiting on a day to get here. I'm amen. telling you, the day of the Lord <laughs> has already dawned. Amen. amen. Yeah. Now, let's go a little further with it. we got a little more time. Let's go. You're not bored yet, are you? All right. Amen. Now, uh, well, I was going to say something. I think I'll wait to say that. You've got to have that desire. Oh, I know what I was going to quote to you because this is a passage everybody knows and can quote it, but it basically tells you exactly how God operates. The very I say unto you, have the faith of God. Yeah. For whosoever shall say unto thee, this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Somebody said praise the Lord. Believe that you receive them. Now, we simply call this tapping into heaven's resources. 
Tapping in there, we're back to what I was talking about a while ago. If I can't do anything about it in the natural, I've got to have a way mm -hmm. that I can lay hold of another power, yeah, another yes. realm, another source. The other realm I get a hold of is the invisible world of heaven on earth. Yeah. I must understand how heaven operates. Yeah. Heaven is abundance. Yeah. Heaven is fullness. Yeah. Heaven is completion. Heaven is no sickness, no pain, no sorrow, no crime, no dying, no poverty, no starvation, no, no depression, no gloom, no sadness, no doubt, no unbelief, no fear, no crooked places, no restraints, nothing to bind me, nothing to hold me back. It is freedom, it is joy, it is righteousness, it is peace. Amen. Now, there's where I belong, that's where I come from. That's my homeland. Uh -huh. That's where I was born. Right. Well, praise the Lord. I was conceived, begotten by the Word, born of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. My original home yes. is heaven. That's where I was conceived. Mm -hmm. as a prophetic Word. Yes. In the eternal mind of God. Mm -hmm. Hello. Therefore, I must come to terms with why was I sent to earth. Mm -hmm. I was not sent to earth to fall into the rat race. Mm -hmm. I was not sent to earth just to become another statistic. Mm -hmm. I was not sent to earth just to plod and struggle along. I was sent here to be a manifestation of what that world is like and to manifest His power, glory to God, on this earth as my Father has sent me, even so send I you as He was in this world, so are we. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. Christ in me is the hope of God. That's why I'm sent here. I'm sent here to heal. I'm sent here to be a light. I'm sent here to be a voice. I'm sent here as the Christ. Amen. 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 Alright. Now if I get that straight, then I'm already ahead of the game. Yeah. Because I understand how heaven operates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I understand how heaven operates, and I understand I come from there, and the reason I came from there was so that God could produce that heaven in and through me, well, praise the Lord. Yes. And it's hard for me to believe if I really believe that and understand it, I'm going to fall over and cluck around every time some little something comes up in my life. No, I'm going to walk in authority and dominion and power. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello. And so because of that, we go back to that one scripture that said uh, that prayer availeth much, which means it makes tremendous power available. Hello. And I find out prayer is not our coaxing God into moving. It. No. it is not our convincing Him to help us. But it is us providing the channel through which His wealth and power of heavenly places can flow. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if I really get a hold of that, my whole world will change and yours will too. If every time I pray I understand that I'm not there to coax or talk God into helping me, yeah. but I'm there for Him to use me as a channel through which His power mm -hmm. and His virtue can flow and change mm -hmm. something, amen. We've got to let the glory come on our mind. We've got to lay hold of the wealth of this power within every one of you. And me tonight is an untapped, un bottomless pool of wealth, of power. Treasures undiscovered. Yeah. Are you hearing me? We've talked so much about the constant flow of life at different times in here. I'll often preach to you how that verse in Ecclesiastes has said the river flows into the sea and the sea's never full. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because the cloud comes right along, pulls the rain out, pulls the water up out of the sea, rains it back into the river, the river flows into the sea, the sea goes back up into the cloud, falls back. Hallelujah. Yeah. With every one of us, that's the, that's the mind of Christ trying to show us that He's granted us access yes. to unlimited resources yes. of power and wealth. <laughs> and yet the average person on the earth has only tapped into 
of the power of God's divine mind. Yeah. That's only a tithe of our ability, yeah. what we can do in Him. All around us right now, folks, even this minute while I'm talking to you, mm -hmm. there's miracles, signs, wonders, yeah. unlimited power and wealth, supernatural. Yeah. But, but we've got to know how to lay hold of it and that's where the kingdom within you comes into play because I tell you man with God's own power on the inside of him just slumbering within him hello mm -hmm. just continuing the daily struggle through life and that ain't the will of God Eating, sleeping, working, plodding through, got through another day, fall in bed, get up, that that ain't living. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again, that is not living. Mm -hmm. Just getting through one day and going through that day, trying not to think about nothing, not because you got faith, because you just don't want to deal with it. And then falling, hoping you wear yourself out enough to fall in bed at night so you can sleep hard enough without dreaming about it. Right. Get up the next day and try to blindly feel your way along till the blinds led the blind both of them's in the ditch. Yeah. That's not kingdom living. No. That's not abundance. Yeah. That's not wealth. No. That's not power. Yeah. That's defeat. Yeah. That's confusion. Yeah. That's fear. Yeah. Yeah. We're afraid to face some things. Yeah. Because we're not fully convinced God's going to move yet. Yeah. Don't shout me down now. Yeah. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about a kingdom within us that will defeat all this stuff. I mean, we're going that way and the truth is I wrote it down here and I say it and I didn't know if I wanted to say it or not, but it's barely above the existence of animals. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And while all along all of nature, all of life calls upon us to awaken ourselves, stir ourselves. Yes. I am come that you might have life. Mm -hmm. And then not only to live, but I want to give you a quality of living. I want you to live abundantly. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Yes. Plenty of us yes. has come into the life part of that scripture. Yes. Oh, yeah. But what about the other half of it? Abundant life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. And mm -hmm. so I've got to break that mold because the whole earth is trying to operate by that old mold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, just uh, to them, just normal. Their normal is survival. Mm -hmm. That's the proof. Yeah. And so I don't want to be a prisoner of the shallow. Yeah. yeah and the mundane. Mm -hmm. I'm a king in the kingdom. Yes. I'm a priest in the house of God. Yes. I'm a Lord walking this earth. Yes. Hello. The source of power, the pool of kingdom wealth's in me. Hallelujah. Well, glory. And if I can tap into that that's in me, well, praise God, then direct it properly. I'll pull anybody that I find out of the rut of mediocrity mm -hmm. and just survival. We'll become exactly what the Bible calls us the elect seed of God. Yeah. The elect seed mm -hmm. of God. The quest is not for power. No. You have all power yeah. in heaven and in earth. Mm -hmm. The quest is not for power. It's how to use it, how to activate it in your life. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? And so when Peter was passing through the city, they brought all those people out there and laid them up down the street. He didn't go hunting somebody to pray. He just released that flow that was on the inside of him. And they got delivered up and down the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Heaven's not higher and out of reach. It's just right around you. Right now. Yeah. The Spirit is the source. Yeah. The mind is is a subconscious mind is the soul that communes with the spirit. Yeah. We'll probably close out right here talking about this. Because the truth is, your mind operates in three dimensions just yes. like any, any other part of yes. you does. Yeah. The first dimension is the outer court, which is the conscious mind. Yes. The conscious mind only operates by what it sees. Jesus, right. 
Hallelujah. I'm conscious that it's lights are on in here. I'm conscious that the doors are closed. I'm conscious that the windows are shut. I'm conscious of the time it is. I'm conscious that in a few minutes I'll walk across that street. Everything that I do in the natural body, I'm conscious of it. Yes. But the truth is, I got another round. The inner court yeah. of my mind is the subconscious. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you something about that conscious round. He wears out. That's why you have to put him to bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you think pitchforks and hammers and shovels will wear you out, just let your mind wear you out one or two times. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it will begin to affect your whole body. Yeah. Your whole time clock on which your body operates will get out of sync. You'll start hurting mm -hmm. where you ain't hurt. Yeah. That's why people with depression often experience physical pain right. in their joints and in their nerves. Yeah. It's because their conscious mind is going haywire and it's wearing them down and wearing them out. And there's a warfare between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. If you don't believe it, lay down some nights and try to go off to sleep and your conscious mind don't want to shut up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let you sleep. Yeah. It roams the roads of crazy stuff that don't make a hill of beans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? Just set yourself on trying to pray some days and watch your crazy conscious head run all over every field in town on stuff that ain't even relevant to what you're praying about. Yeah. Hello? Just as there's a war between the natural and the spiritual, there is a war ground between you moving out of the conscious realm of your mind and getting over into the subconscious realm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the subconscious realm, praise God for that old conscious mind that hushes and, and goes, it goes to sleep or gets still. Yeah. Oh, there's another part of your mind that Paul calls the spirit of your mind. Oh, hallelujah to God. And let me tell you something about that part. It never wears out. Even yeah. while you sleep at night, it comes alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And the thing is, God is able to make that subconscious mind mm -hmm. put an imprint. Yeah. Oh, that'll overpower mm -hmm. that conscious realm. Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The soul is the gate between the two realms. Mm -hmm. Add that the way it works in your in your makeup as spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. The mm -hmm. soul is a gateway between the body mm -hmm. and the spirit. It's the seat of communication. It's the seat of feeling. Yeah. It's amen. And if it ain't redeemed, it'll be hell. And if it is redeemed, it'll be heavenly. Yeah. Praise yes. the Lord. And how many know that's the way it is that we've got to learn to yield to that subconscious. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we said, well, how do I do it? Be still and know that I, that I mm -hmm. am God. Somebody say praise mm -hmm. the Lord. What does he mean, be still? Sit in a chair and don't move? No. He means get in such a place of praise and worship unto God that your mind has to back off and listen to what the spirit of your mind Hallelujah. 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 Yea, trust me to do the work. This night saith the Lord, for ye have heard the word. Yea, ye have visibly looked upon my words this night and seen what is written. Now let that inner man come alive within thee this night and take hold of more than what is written, but take hold of this word that proceeded out of the mouth of God and let it become help unto all your flesh, saith the Lord. For surely I am able to cause thee to think such thoughts of the subconscious realm where thou must see life and abundance and wealth and holiness and power and see that it is found. 
For yea, I have put it within me. And yea, this night by my word and my spirit, uh, I am mighty it forth and bringing it to the light. And thou shalt surely see a demonstration of it in thy walk, saith the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, are you glad for the word tonight? Are you glad for what God said? Are you glad for that kingdom within that is producing? Glory to God. We bless you tonight in the name of the Lord. We love every one of you. We'll see you back here Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Okay.